So, one billion lions. That's a, uh, that's a lot of lions. But you know what does a lot of damage? A lot of weapons. And this is not your normal 4v4. This is every weapon to ever exist in Splatoon. I'm here today to tell you that I truly believe the lions will lose. And here is why. Salmon run. You know the mode. You fight endless hordes of salmonids to secure victory for you and your teammates. This is four players versus essentially limitless enemies. You, the player, are already used to this. And most Inklings and Octolings in the Splatlands are used to this too, given how normalized Grizzco has become in their lives. In this all-out situation, let's assume that our chosen fighters have plenty of Grizzco experience. Why are we gonna recruit some newcomer to this anyway, right? I hope, I hope we don't. Sheldon? Sheldon? Let's make a couple of assumptions about this fight. The lions can only spawn on land. Because we're basing this on Splatoon 3, let's use the massive desert environment beyond Splatsville as our main fighting ground. If they need more space, hey, uh, Incadia is right there. All our Inklings and Octolings need to do a few things to maximize their chances. First of all, let's assume that respawning is not an option here. How fair would that be if the Inklings could just respawn? Not at all. If they all could respawn, the game would be over. Inklings and Octolings don't have a lot of health after all. The trick is to be sure everyone participating is, um, the same ink color? Why take extra damage if you don't have to, right? Otherwise, it'd be so easy for players to perform friendly fire and start taking out their teammates. Hopefully they discussed the color they want to be before firing off into battle. Another advantage of this is that any player would be able to heal up in their teammates dropped ink. There's also a much better chance that ink will be readily available to refill ink tanks as well. Let's assume that any lion defeated simply falls over and despawns, and does not leave behind the typical massive explosion of ink that occurs with a regular splat, because that would be a little unfair. We do have to assume common splatting mechanics work too. If the ink doesn't affect the lions, then this falls apart right away. It's already terrible enough because we're basically asking if a bunch of inklings can shoot a billion lions and win. <laughs> The lions should have 100 HP, the same as the Inklings and Octolings, so it's a fair fight in close combat. How many weapons do the Cephalopods get to work with? Including the hero weapons, Splatoon 1 has 91 unique weapons, Splatoon 2 has 139 unique weapons, and Splatoon 3 has 68 as of the chill season. Altogether, that's 298 weapons to work with. Because the weapons have changed in style and kit over the course of the three games, yes, you will see three Corbin Roller Decos, three Hydra Splatlings, etc., but they will all be different iterations of the same weapon. No doubles allowed. That is a lot of firepower. If some players need to regain ink to keep firing, there will be opportunities to do that. The only way to lose out on a specific weapon and its kit is by getting splatted and being disqualified from the fight. One of the greatest weapons on the player's side is that few things matter more to Inklings than the joy of sport. <laughs> they love turf war. Although going tentacle to paw against a massive swath of meowing mammals is basically a real war, you know there would be nothing that could destroy their morale. No way would anyone give up the fight before it was over. Do Inklings want to lose in the last 30 seconds of Turf War? No. Do Inklings want to be defeated when there's any chance of winning? Absolutely not. They would never back down from a lion fight. You know how curiosity kills the cat? Well, it empowers the squid. Imagine the interest these players would have in fighting something completely new and also related to Judd, a being they consider to be one of the most powerful animals in their society. Of course they'll want to fight. Hello? But this fight isn't a guaranteed win for the Inklings and Octolings. How do the lions get the upper hand? Hack mentality. Like a bunch of wolves, but they're lions. Most weapons in Splatoon do not pierce. Instead, they can only hit one opponent at a time, allowing for a large pile of lions to overwhelm a single player with ease. This means the Inklings and Octolings will have to work together to not get overwhelmed. Another question is how thick these packs are. Splatoon 3 is post-apocalyptic, and sea levels have risen significantly. There's a lot less land for a billion lions to be traveling and standing on. If the lions are all in one grand pack, it would take a lot of effort to keep them in bay. 
but it'd be funny to watch a billion lions all try to jump over wave breaker lines without tripping on them. Since the lions wouldn't be leaving ink behind, unlike salmonids or octarians, let's allow a special to be gained for every lion that is despawned by a player, specifically only that inkling or octoling. One of the greatest tools at their disposal is actually special charge up to get lots of specials. Let's let's go over the best specials. There is plenty of pain to go around. I've created a handy dandy special weapon tier list here. In S plus, we have the Booyah Bomb, the Bubbler, the Killer Whale, the Crab Tank, both the Ink Strikes and the Ink Zooka. Booyah Bomb is probably your Inklings and Octolings best secret weapon. Remember. When your teammates perform a booyah, they get extra special. Just like when you end up fighting against a bunch of arrow sprays and they all booyah bomb spam at the same time and mash booyah and then before you know it they have like four booyahs. Well, here you could do that with every single booyah bomb weapon in the group. Getting rid of a bajillion lions all at once. Will it be a billion lions? No, booyah bomb doesn't have a massive radius, but it is awesome. Bubbler will save lives. It's an instant popping special, and the shield will spread across a bunch of the players all at once. Easy. Thank you, Bubbler. Killer Whale is Killer Whale. If you've ever seen Pearl use the Killer Whale in Octo Expansion, you know that thing is gonna rip through everything in its path. It also is a global special, so it'll just keep going. <laughs> Please. Tell me what a pack of lions is gonna do to a killer whale. They're not defeating a literal whale, and they will be defeated by the special version too. <laughs> Crab barely is an S plus, but I, I, I think it deserves the spot. It's basically a mobile splatling. Also, never hurts to be able to go into a ball form and just move away from all the problems going on. There's no such thing as a bad ink strike. It destroys everything in its path. Case closed, S plus. Oh, and Zooka? Zooka in Splatoon 1 just goes through everything as one big column of ink. Please, I hope the lions can run, because if they're in a big old pack, they're going nowhere. Except back to spawn? Wherever the spawn is, bah. In S tier, you've got the bomb rushes, the killer whale 5.1, the tenta missiles, your ink armor, your bubble blower, your trizooka, and wave breaker. Bomb rush is basically not only unlimited bombs, but also unlimited ink, so you can keep firing at the lions. Or just paint to run if you need to. It's kind of just a good save. Killer Whale 5.1 isn't as damaging as the real Killer Whale, but it still can be very good. It might be hard to lock on to a specific lion, given as you're gonna be locking on to every lion at once, possibly. <laughs> Tenta missiles are awesome, we know that. However, the thing about Tenta missiles is they have a limited number of opponents that they can lock on to, meaning that you can't hit every lion at once, just, you know, a select few. It would be very good to counter any packs that you come across, though, because they'd have to scatter, otherwise bad things would happen to them. Ink armor isn't as free as Bubbler, it's only a limited amount of health that you get, but it never hurts to have a free little bit of health, especially if you're being jumped by a bunch of lions. Bubble Blower is goofy and good. Just send those bubbles flying over a chunk of lions and then pop them all. Woohoo! There's always a chance while you're running though, you might end up out of the range of the Bubble Blower and then you can't use it though, which would be kind of sad. Trizooka just doesn't have as many shots as the real Inkzooka. So of course you're not gonna get as much use out of it as you would the real one. It's still great though and cuts through an entire path of lions. And Wave Breaker? Ah, Wave Breaker. It's so good. Do the waves go out and kill a billion lions? No. Can the lions jump over the Wave Breaker? Yes. Will they be able to? Who knows? Can the lions destroy the Wave Breaker? Uh, probably. But it still will take care of a lot of them on the ground if they're not paying attention, which is good. In A tier, you've got your Ink Storm, your Kraken, your Stingray, your Baller, your Ultra Stamp. Now, Storm obviously does a bunch of damage over time, but the lions are all moving, and they're probably gonna keep moving, so it's kind of limited in scope. Kraken, in theory, should slap. You're literally an invincible squid. You could run in, you could jump, you could hit a bunch of them, but then you have to leave. If you do not remember to leave as the Kraken before, you know, it runs out, 
you're dead. <laughs> Stingray is awesome. Obviously, you can hit opponents from afar, and that's great, but it also slows you down, like, a lot. That's not great. Baller has a similar problem to Kraken. It's, in theory, great. You could roll up to a bunch of the lions and just blow up on them. But if they're still running at you after you blow up, now you're kind of in a bad position, unless people are firing at the lions that are running at you, so it might not work out that well. <laughs> And Stamp wants to be good. I think Stamp probably works better in this case if you just throw it like a giant burst bomb. That way you can just fly through a line of lions instead of you endangering yourself. In V rank, you got the inkjet, you got the reef slider, you got the splashdown, and you have the tacticooler. Reef slider and splashdown both suffer from the same problem of you have to go into the lions to do the most damage, so you probably don't want to do that. Reef slider could be good for just Leaving though, yay! Inkjet has the possibility of doing a ton of damage. Having players in the air is always useful, but eventually you're gonna get recalled back to the ground, and if that spot has been covered in lions since you went up in the air, that's a GG's. Cooler makes you fast. It'll bring up your ink efficiency so you can fire in more lions, but if you know, you can't get to the cooler, you can't really use it. And let's assume the cooler still only has four drinks. So only four of the 298 Inklings and Octolings on the field will actually get to use it. In C tier, we've got the Big Bubbler. You have the Ink Vac, and you have the Zipcaster. Zipcaster suffers the same way Inkjet suffers. You're gonna go back to the ground, you're gonna get lion did it did it at least with Inkjet, I feel like you have a little more time to figure out what you want to do, but Zip, you really don't. Lions can run through the big bubbler. It's not going to work that well. It can be good to allow people to super jump to you really quick if they're like, you know, too deep into the fight, but that's about it. Lions can run straight up to you if you're ink backing. However, it avoids the F tier because you do get a big old blast that you could fire at the end. You might be asking, why is Echolocator so bad? Well, unlike Tenta Missiles, Echolocator marks everything, and all your teammates will see where their opponents are, as if the lions aren't, you know, directly in front of you. Imagine how disorienting that would be to have that many Echolocator lines all appearing all at once. Uh, no thank you? I think if anyone uses an Echolocator, that's like a point for the lions. I want some honorable mentions of the heaviest hitters of the group, who the lions should be targeting and who the inklings should be protecting with their lives to ensure a better chance of victory. Literally any sniper weapon. Come on, it pierces. Make sure the snipers are at a far place and let them rip away into all the lions. If you could pierce 10 lions with every shot, you'd just need 100 million really good shots to win. Yes. Splash wall, slow them down. They gotta rip down that splash wall before they can go running at you. It's good. Obviously, lethal bombs, like splat bomb, curly bomb, fizzy bomb. Throw them at the lions and just run. Let them do the job for you, like you're playing salmon run. Rollers could be a bit risky since they could just turn in and beat you up, but it could be good if they all have 100 health just like an inkling. Just run in and hit them. Just make sure you're not using the big swig or the carbon roller. Make sure your Splatling players stay alive. That's some massive DPS on your hands right there. And with enough Splatlings all in one place, the damage that comes out will be beautiful. Mwah. In the end, there won't be any weapon that's completely 100% useless against a horde of lions. There are definitely some that are worse though, like the kill one at a time at best good old H3 nozzle nose. But there you have it. One billion lions should not win against nearly 300 cephalopods equipped with extremely powerful weapon technology. Is it a guarantee? No. But do I think they could do it? Yes. Do you disagree with me? Maybe. Do you have other evidence that would imply it's actually easier or harder for the Inklings and Octolings to win? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this. I've been writing these thoughts down for a while. <laughs> And be sure to subscribe to catch more silly Splatoon content from me in the future. Have a good one.